Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Friday. Uh, this is another edition of Pickup Lines presented by Gomez Law Firm and Integrity Roofing and Siding. And we are uh, broadcasting once again from inside this fantastic, newly washed, by the way, Looks Lexus. Nice. Uh, thank you, Lexus nice. RZ450E, yeah. courtesy of North Park Lexus at San Antonio and North Park Lexus at Dominion. And I am literally outside the gates here at Fort Sam Houston uh, with the man who, uh, I, I was going to say, I've had a lot of people in this chair over the months and years uh, and this one would rank up there and you literally rank up there uh, this is Lieutenant General John Evans humbly, Commanding General of the US Army North 5th Army uh, and I'm thrilled uh, to be here and I appreciate your hospitality well thanks for, for having me I was excited to do it I've watched uh, the the group of folks that you've had uh, on pickup lines and I was like, wow, I'm in, I'm in pretty good company to sit here with Ernie, with with those folks, with those guests. So thanks for the opportunity. Well, again, I don't like to compare guests, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like comparing children. You know, when you ask which one's that. your favorite. But I I'm going to tell you right now, you're up, you're, you're right up there, yeah, uh, I will say. Um, and I'm guessing it's not the easiest thing in the world to, to just grab a general for 15, 20, 30 minutes at a time. You have to be very busy, even on a Friday. Yeah, well, so it, it, it's pretty steady, you know, but I think yeah. most people in their work days are pretty steady. Um, I've got a fabulous team, though. That's yes. what makes the difference. They support me. They point me in the right direction. Uh, you know, even though I keep my own calendar on my phone and everything, I'm always sticking my head out the door saying, hey, what's next? Yeah. So they keep me going in the right direction. Well, and there, some of them are literally outside the car they right are. here. And I was talking to them earlier. I, I, I'm hoping, uh, fingers crossed, that we can make this a recurring thing with the military in San Antonio. I just think there's so many great stories to be told. Something I've always wanted to do. Now, it's going to be tough to top you being in the car well, after you, today. You want to but... start, you know, with the <laughs> Army first. That's the way to go. But I'll certainly be your advocate as you endeavor to do that. I appreciate that. So let me just put out a disclaimer here off the top. Sure. I uh, am going to learn some things today. I don't, you know, I don't come from uh, a great military family history. We, I do have uncles and cousins who have served, and they're amazing, obviously. But in terms of, like, immediate family, I did not grow up with that. Um, I've been, you know, in the media for a number of years, so I know a little bit about the, the military here in San Antonio. But, but I, I, I want to just plead the ignorance card right off the top, and and I want to learn along with some of our viewers today. So, if you were explaining, it's command. You're the commanding general, general, U.S. Army North. How would you explain what you do to a civilian, to a lay person who you see? What happens here? At Fort Sam, what do you do? Yeah, so I have two roles here at Fort Sam. Uh, first of all, I'm the senior officer on Fort Sam Houston, and Fort Sam Houston's got a long, uh, a long relationship with San Antonio and South Texas. It's been here at Government Hill since about 1880, but the Army's been here since before Texas statehood and before mm. the Republic. So the Army has been here for a long time. So I'm the senior commander for the Fort Sam Houston portion of the Joint Base, okay. uh, but I'm also the commander of United States Army North, and we right. are the Army Service Component Command for United States Northern Command, who has the responsibility for North America. So Canada, okay. the United States, Mexico, and the Bahamas are all part of that responsibility. I'm the land component guy as the Army guy. And so Homeland Defense is, is my principal okay. role. But we also, you'll see us on the news from time to time, we do defense support to civil authorities. We okay. call it DISCA. So we help out with hurricanes and wildfires. Yeah. Uh, we helped out with finding homes for Afghans. We were the lead DOD agency during the COVID response. So right. a lot of people see this patch, right. uh, and they recognize us from those relief efforts. Okay, so again, if I'm looking at a map, mm -hmm. and I, I hear U.S. Army North, right. geographically North, I'm thinking further up from where we are. So why is it called U.S. Army North? Really because of the North America. North America. Yeah. So got we've, got a U we've got a U.S. Army South. Got it. Which works for the Southcom commander. We've got a U.S. Army Central, which works in the Middle East. We've got right. a U.S. Army Pacific, and right. so on and so forth. Okay, so you are a three-star general. I'm a three-star general. Um, what are some cool rights and privileges that you get <laughs> that, that and you, you obviously spent decades working <clears throat> to get to where you are now. But you've got to have some cool perks or something that only a general could have. So I do have a parking space here, so there's <laughs> that's, that. That's, that's, that's a good start. Um, you know, it, it, it's interesting. Our military, I don't believe, is as deferential to, uh -huh. to rank as a lot of uh, a lot of our peer militaries that are out there. There are certain things, you know, as a general officer that you get. I'm, I'm entitled to have a driver that takes me places. Right. That's, that's very useful for me because now I don't have to look for parking in San Antonio. How great is uh, that? Yeah, that's fabulous, particularly downtown. Yeah, I, I, don't care. I have, a, I have an, an aide, uh, and his job is to make sure that 
that I'm where I'm supposed to be, doing the right thing at the right time in the right uniform, all of those types of things. I've got a pretty considerable staff that empowers me as the commander yeah. to do the things that I need to do uh, so that Army North is doing their job. Got it. Which, got you know, it. I'm responsible for making sure that we do our job. When we do our job well, people thank me, and I try to pass that praise down. Yeah. When we screw something up, I take the blame and say that's on me because we didn't all do you. that well. It's yeah. all you. I know we have a lot of uh, military who could potentially be watching, so please, if you have a question for the general or just a thought or a comment or anything or, or want to tell us uh, about your service, uh, first of all, thank you for that, and then uh, please do so. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's just pretty remarkable. You've been here since about, what, 2021 in San yeah. Antonio? Yeah, you got, came from Fort Knox? I did, I did. So at Fort Knox, I had a fabulous job there, too. I was the senior commander of that installation, right. not a joint installation, an Army installation, and we were there for about three and a half years. We were there during the heart of covid uh, but I was the commander of uh, Army Cadet Command, which means I was responsible for all of the Army's senior ROTC programs at mm -hmm. about 975 colleges and universities around the country. And I also had kind of purview and supervisory responsibility for the Army's 1,700 high school junior ROTC programs. So I got to work with young, you know, youthful, energized leaders every day, and it was right. so rewarding. What a great job. You didn't have to watch any gold or do any of that stuff with no, all the gold. No, no. So the gold actually sits outside okay. of the installation itself. But we do have certain responsibilities and agreements to make sure that nobody can get to it. How's that? I Yeah. yeah. Well, similar to here, though. As I drove up, I look at, at the facade here of the, of, of the building, and, and there obviously looks like there's some work happening. And, sure. Um, you're, you're having to work around some construction or some – is it renovation? Yeah, or? it is. Uh, so the, the, the historic quadrangle, uh, again, was finished in about 1880, 1881. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on the National Historic Registry, so many people in San Antonio have been here and visited it. Sure. It's open to the public uh, if you want to come. And we've got wildlife inside the quadrangle. We've got uh, peacocks and deer and ducks and – uh, it's really kind of a fascinating place. But the bones of this building, uh -huh. even though they're 140 years old, are very solid, very mm. very sound. But the interior does need a rework every now and then. So yeah. we're doing some renovations right now to kind of bring it up to kind of some energy compliance standards yeah. to save a little you know, uh, money on energy. And at the same time, to make our workspaces better for our, our employees. Very good. Okay. Where did you grow up, by the way? Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. So I'm not from Texas, but I got here as soon as I could. You did. You did. So... Um, when you were a child or growing up, what was it always? Did you have a military background, or was it was it always going to be the military for you, or what did you think you were going to do? You know, I'm a little bit like you. I didn't have anybody in my immediate family mm -hmm. that had served in many years, to be honest. My father, however, was a graduate of the Citadel, the Military yes. College of sure. South Carolina. He went there on a football scholarship. He got injured playing football, and because of that injury, was not qualified to serve. Right. But he instilled in me and my brothers a very deep sense of responsibility to our nation. Uh, and so I went to Appalachian State University in the mountains of North Carolina. I joined ROTC because somebody told me it would be an easy A to pad my GPA <laughs> my freshman year. Uh, and lo and behold, fell in love with it. Right. And then the rest, you know, is, is kind of history. Did you ever think about playing football or, or pursuing that on a professional level? I, I dabbled with it a little bit at App, and what I found out was I was uh, – too small for the positions that I was suited for, and too slow for the ones that they wanted me to play. Okay. Well, you, you did okay for yourself. I think you think you made a wise choice. So, you got here in about I think September of 2021. So you've been here, right? Is that about right? Two and a half years. Okay, yeah. two and a half years. I wonder what you knew about San Antonio before you came, and then when you got here, because we know it, you know, military city USA and the, the tremendous pride and everything. But coming from outside of Texas. What did you know about this place, and, and what do you think about it now? Well, you know, I'd always heard about San Antonio. I'd never been stationed in Texas, which is kind of rare, but I'm a special operations aviator by trade, and there just wasn't a lot down here for, for a special ops aviator to do. So we were excited about coming to Texas, particularly yeah. San Antonio, beautiful city. My wife's brother and sister-in-law had lived here for a number of years. Uh, but when I got here, I'll tell you, I saw uh, Mayor Nuremberg the first time, and I said, hey, Mayor, I hear they call this. Military City USA, he goes, that's right, General. I said, that's a pretty big brag. I don't know about that. I was here maybe six weeks. I saw him again. I said, you know what, Ron? You're right. This is Military City USA uh, because the people here are just fabulous. Yeah. They, they invest in uh, and uh, support the military in a way that I've not seen before. Yeah. No, I think we take a lot of pride in that. I would agree with you. So, so people are chiming in here, and I want to see if I can sure. get it. Um, 
Let's see. Okay, so this is uh, Angel Leo. So he says, what's the main thing that has changed or that you have needed to adapt to in the course of your service while in the military? I was going to ask you that. It's a good question. I spent time with the military, Fiesta military ambassadors yesterday. Uh, some of them are, are just starting out their military careers. Sure. And I was thinking yeah. driving over here, what it must be like for mm -hmm. them who, and we're talking to high school seniors who are making, you know, committing to the military branches and thinking about that. What it must have been like for you when you were 18, 19, just starting out as compared to a teenager or someone getting into the military now in 2024? Right. So I'll tell you that there's always technological change, right? Yeah. And so as an, as an Army aviator, uh, I, I will tell you, as I get, as I'm into my 36th year of service, wow. most of the airplanes, helicopters that I flew are now in the museum. <laughs> so <laughs> aren't many of those left around that, that I'm rated in. Uh, so there's that aspect. Yeah. There's also a social change, which I think is incredibly valuable to our country. And that is that uh, our, our military, if you think about it, has led social change in our country mm -hmm. from uh, where we were with segregation to where we went with women serving in the military and the first women going to our, our, our academies. Mm -hmm. I've seen that change in my lifetime because we, we've now got an opportunity for all of our soldiers or service members, regardless of their gender or background, to serve in any job. And when I came in the military, uh, women could not fly combat aircraft, wow. Apaches and gunships and things like that. That changed over time, and now we've got women that are airborne rangers and special forces, and and we've really kind of moved beyond you know some of those uh, uh, some of those biases that we had that were really unfounded. I think about the sacrifice for for, for military members that are stationed overseas or, or separated from their families, and I think. Well, today we have the phone, and, and you sure. have Skype, and you have Zoom, and you have instant communication in real time. But but I'm guessing when you started out your career, I mean, there were not much less smartphones. But I mean, it cost a fortune to make a phone call. Or yeah. I know you've been over, you've been in Afghanistan, sure, you've been in sure. Korea, right, and other places. I have. So so uh, I went to the Gulf War uh, in uh, 1990, and uh, I can remember being in the Gulf War and trying to call my wife, and I stood in a line for six hours to make a three-minute phone call, which AT&T was gracious enough to pay for for all of our service members, by the Back way. Back then. It was a hard-line phone call. Sure, right? yeah. And they had moved that hard line into where our camp was. But for six hours, I sat there, and I, and I for three minutes, I talked before the line dropped. Uh, and then if I wanted to communicate with her or my family, I wrote letters, and the turnaround was six to seven weeks on a letter. That's crazy. And, and nowadays, kids, they have no concept of what Pre -email. a personal letter would be like, right? They get uh, business mail. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I listen. I'm all. I, I sometimes I like to have a pad and paper. Or sure, write, I've yeah. been known to write handwrite letters and stuff. But this is pre social media, pre Absolutely. smartphone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, this technology has been incredibly enabling for all of us. It's, it's allowed us to move faster to increase the speed of decision making from a military standpoint. But we also know that there are some drawbacks that come with it too. Right? Yeah. With the social media space and. And the fact that we, we see folks now that are just so completely consumed by it yeah. that sometimes it's hard for people to maintain focus. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword, right? Yeah, my buddy Richard Vildgado, who's a great military buddy of mine, he yeah. says mail call was <laughs> hey, so Richard. important. So I'm guessing that mail call is when, when the letters came in. It, it was huge for morale, yeah. you know? You, you got a letter. You got a letter. And it's just like when you watch the old movies on TV, right? <laughs> right. Or, or MASH or something, they have mail call. Yeah. And you get a letter, and that's huge, and then you get a package, and that's uh, like, oh, my gosh. And then everybody huddles around to yeah. see what's in it. It's interesting you brought up MASH because I was going to ask you about that. I've talked to, like, FBI agents or politicians or other you know, people before, and I always like to ask them, the way the military or military leadership generals are portrayed in TV, movies, uh, do they get it right most of the time, or do you have a favorite yeah. movie or TV show that you're like, hey, you know what, they, they got that right? So it's it's a little bit of a double-edged sword again. I think sometimes they poke a little bit of fun at the generals, and that's okay. We've got <laughs> we've got thick skins. Sometimes there's it's complete parody, right? So there's it's not very accurate. And then sometimes they they do very. I think they do a really good job of trying to portray, um, you know, what what it was really like, and they are very technically correct and they bring in technical advisors yeah, that were sure. there so a couple of my, my the ones that i think are the best hard to say favorites because they're tragic yeah. stories but we were soldiers once in young or we were soldiers once i think is what the movie's okay. called uh, about uh, one of our first forays into vietnam uh where <clears throat> a u.s unit found themselves kind of uh, 
overwhelmed by mm. Vietnamese forces. Mel Gibson, I think, is in that one. Mm-hmm. But a great movie if you want to sit down, you know, on a Friday night and, and learn a little bit about that war. The other one's Black Hawk Down. Again, sure, I've seen that's it. That's my yeah. unit, uh, okay. the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment. Uh, I was not there during that time. I got right. to the unit about two years later. But um, I think Mark Bowden, who wrote the book, he actually wrote it as a series of articles ah. for the Philadelphia Inquirer before he, he made the book. Uh, he, he did a very good job of relating what that challenge was mm-hmm. like, right? Being in a in really kind of a third world country without clear strategic guidance and st- yet still trying to, to execute really high-end operations yeah. and, and how dangerous and uh, fraught with risk that can become. I just cannot, can, I cannot <clears throat> fathom what that must be like for people who lived that. Um, oh, yeah, Amazing. And And I know you you are highly decorated and you, you've a- acquired some accommodations or... <laughs> Am I saying that? Wait, not, is it a con- well um, awards and decorations? Awards and decorations. Sure, thank yeah, you. Well, you yeah. Accommodations is something else, but um, so so that that's pretty cool as well. But I, I'm always curious, you know, how how it's portrayed in in Hollywood and everything. What what that's like? They get it right a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. I, I am thrilled to have uh, some time this morning with Lieutenant General John Evans. Uh, somebody asked me earlier if I had ever sat down with you like this, and I said, you know, we've spoken a few times. Sure. sure. Five minutes here, a couple yeah. minutes here, fiesta events and everything. Fiesta is coming soon, yeah. and I know you're a fan. So excited. So excited. Uh, you know, my wife and I, when we got here, people started talking about Fiesta. We'd heard about it on the periphery, but until you experience it, you just, right. you just don't get it. Uh, and then, I agree. And then when you when you consider the fact that it is, it is almost exclusively about giving back, mm-hmm. everything that, that we do, the PMOs, everything that's going on during that, uh, that, that two-week period, right is about giving back to the community, providing scholarship opportunities, right. reaching out to youth, uh, expanding the cultural horizons. We were all in. So we joined the Fiesta Commission the first year we were here, and we are continue to be members. And the military is such an amazing <clears throat> part of that. And I tell people to this day, there's nothing like writing in one of – you've been in the Fiesta Parades. Yeah. To, to be able to have the honor of being in one and riding down the streets or whatever, or, or the river, you know, for the Cavalier Parade is – I'll, that'll never get old for me. It, it's really neat. And even though the Air Force <laughs> is the military coordinator this year, right. I had the privilege. It of alternates, it. right? It does. And yeah. I had the privilege of doing it last year. Yeah. We love that. Uh, but but uh, my wife and I, my Sergeant Major and his wife, uh, we will be out there. We'll be at the Cavalier River Parade. We'll be in the uh, Battle of Flowers okay. Parade. We'll be in the Flambeau Parade. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're excited. Do you get to have Fiesta medals? I actually have worked out a way to have Fiesta medals this year. Okay. As you know, we did them last year. We actually paid for those because we can't use the government's money to buy those things. Okay. Uh, but we've got a, we've got an association that's going to help us this year with that. And so we will have a limited number. Okay. Myself, my command sergeant major, and a couple of others will have those. And if you see us during Fiesta, come up and uh, ask us for a medal. I've always said the military medals are always my favorites because they're so beautiful. I don't care what branch. I don't care what the title is. I don't care. They're always just so well done and so beautiful. And, and you know we have a retired Air Force colonel as our Ray Fayo this year, so I'd like to brag right. on him. Yeah, he did a fabulous job with his medal. I won't, I won't tip it out because I'm not <laughs> sure how many people he's shown it to, but, but he's a pilot. And yes, so sir. You can, you can draw your own conclusions from there, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so let me ask you this again. I'm just with <clears throat> not, not knowing a lot about the military. You're, you're a three-star general, as I mentioned. Right. How many three-star generals are there in San Antonio right now? So uh, there are four of us, I believe. So the, the installation and uh, management command commander here at Fort Sam Houston is a three-star. Uh, the 16th Air Force uh, general who runs Air Force Cyber is okay. a three-star. And then the commander of uh, Air Force Education and Training Command, General Robinson, who is the military sure, coordinator sure. this right. year for Fiesta, is a three-star as well. We had a great military reception not too long ago for Ray Fayo, and that was just an unbelievable night, just to have so much oh, military sure. leadership yeah. under one roof. That was yeah, we really, enjoyed really cool. that greatly, yeah. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention your hat, because it's just it's beautiful, it's, and and I'm sure it's got a story, or, or you, you want to brag on that. Well, what I, you know, I thought I'd bring something that we could kind of talk about that's, that's related to the military and kind of Texas history. Okay. And so the cavalry Stetson, which you'll see many soldiers wear right. in ceremonial roles, uh, we, we wear them on Fridays here at Fort Sam, and we wear these brightly colored patches as well as okay. part of our identification at uh, Fifth Army. But it really goes back to our time during westward expansion uh, when we had horse cavalry in the Army. Uh, and the Stetson was worn, you know, like everybody wears a hat, mm-hmm. keep the sun out of your eyes, protect your face. Uh, and so as we moved away from horses mm-hmm. and moved into modern technology with tanks and, and vehicles and other things, 
one of the things we do is we harken back to our history, and we, we put on a Stetson every now and then. Mine's got uh, three stars up here, right. so it's got my rank. It's got my master aviator wings because I'm, a, I'm an Army aviator. And then it's got the cross sabers of the cavalry uh, to signify our, our history with the cavalry. I love it. I love it. So in your role as a, as a general, is that something and that, that you ever can turn off? Like, like you're, you're, I'm guessing you're on call or this is a 24-7 job for you. Uh, but, but like, can you turn it off? And, yeah. and then what do you like to do for fun or when, when you don't have to be a general, yes. if you will? So that's a great question. Okay. And what I would tell you is it's not just generals. I mean, anyone who serves in the military, right? you're, you're on duty, Twenty. you're not on duty. You, you are a soldier or an airman or a Marine 24-7, right. which means even in your off-duty hours, you have to carry yourself and comport yourself in accordance with the uh, with the uh, service standards and right. that type of thing. And our our young men and women do a fabulous job of that. I certainly am on call twenty four seven. Sure, right? that's kind of, that kind of comes with the territory. That. But I do take my time off. I mean, my work day is not much different than most people. It, hopefully, I'm out of the office by five or six o'clock and okay. go home and have dinner with my family and spend time with my kids. I have two young daughters, uh, younger daughters, and. Just try to enjoy the things that everybody else enjoys. To, to blow off steam, I like to ride. I'm a cyclist, so uh, I, oh, get, I get out not on the streets of San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. That's a little, it's a little dangerous. Tricky. That's a little tricky. Uh, but I, I go out on uh, the Salado Creek Greenway or somewhere oh. like that, and I get okay. out on my bike, and I and I spin for a couple hours, and I really uh, that helps decompress me. May I ask how old your daughters are? My daughters are 17 and 15. Hey, I was teenage. I was thinking you were going to say that. I have teenage daughters myself, yeah. and I'm just wondering. I had the sheriff in this chair not too long ago, and he's <laughs> he's got daughters. Right. And I was thinking what that conversation must be like when when a brave man, young man, says that he would like to date one of your daughters, uh, and then they ask your daughter, "Oh, uh, yeah, your father. Oh, uh, who's your father? I'm sorry, what? The, I that convert to be a fly on the wall. That's got to be an interesting conversation. Well, thankfully. Right, wrong, or indifferent, neither one of them dates yeah, very no, much at this point. There you go. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, it's uh, it helps keep you in check because <laughs> you may be the general when you're at work, but when you come home, you're, you're near the end of the totem pole, I can tell you. That's just, you know, my wife's at the top, without a doubt. Amen uh, to that. And then the kids are generally in there between me and her and the cats, and then me and the dog, we're kind of in last place. I get it. But listen, I mean, you, you know this better than anybody else. I mean, your, your girls and your wife... Uh, military families probably don't get enough credit. Spouses and children don't get enough credit, significant others, for the sacrifices they have to make. Yeah, thanks for that. And I, and I agree. Um, our military-connected families, uh, the children, uh, are incredibly resilient. Mm -hmm. They are asked to do things that would be foreign to most people, picking up and moving after two or yeah. three years. Yeah. You know, they're building relationships and frid and forging friendships at their schools. And before you know it, mom or dad gets orders and they've got to move to the next duty station. That's incredibly hard yeah. and stressful on the family. But I can tell you that my kids and many other kids have handled that so well. Yeah. And, and I attribute most of that to my wife, who is the anchor, the foundation, the cornerstone of our family. She keeps us all uh, properly adjusted. She takes care of us. Uh, and I'd be lost without her. I, you and I have that in common. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's uh, you don't have to be in the military to appreciate that. <laughs> I, I'm I'm with you on all that. So a few more minutes here with the general. Just uh, loving this conversation, and, and uh, it's a conversation I've wanted to have for a very long time. So thank you again for that. Um, you said what, 36 years in, or how 36, many? 36. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing it's it's you got to, you've you've done a lot of time. I mean, is is retirement in the near future I, it for is, you? It is in the near future. Okay. For me. Yep. Okay. So I uh, no no secret. I think I've told plenty of people, but. Uh, I've kind of reached the end of my road, which I'm very happy about. Uh, we are going to retire in October. So I'll actually change command of, uh, of 5th Army and Army North uh, in August. Hmm. And we are excited about the next chapter. We're staying in San Antonio. It has made such an impression That's on us. That's awesome, by the Our way. Our kids love it. That's awesome. Uh, my wife and I love it. We have dear friends of the community. And we couldn't think of a better place to make our retirement uh, foray than San Antonio. So we're excited about the future. Well, I'm biased, but I was hoping you would say that. And I'm sorry to see you leave on a personal selfish note, but, but I'm thrilled that you're going to still be here in the area. And so, and I suspect you will be no stranger around here once you retire. I mean, I, I will certainly be available to help out. You know, yeah. the old commanders try not to get back in the new commander's space very often, but, but I think, uh, what you find is, uh, if you, if you come with the right attitude to want to continue to help uh, military families and military-connected families, all commanders welcome that. So I will, I will be at the disposal 
of uh, the Joint Base Commander, of the Army North Commander, anything yeah. I could do to support our yeah. families. You talked about the history of the building here, the, the Fort Sam, the bones and everything, um, the quadrangle, which I've had the honor of, of being at with just my Ray Feo duties and everything and hope to do it again soon. But your favorite part of this place, what, what do you love most about it? That's a, that's a tough question. Yeah. I, I would say um, I love the fact that I, my office is, is located down on the, 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 the spear that's kind of on the, the east side, if you right. will. Uh, I can walk out, and my office faces Grayson. It does not face the interior of the mm -hmm. quadrangle. I can walk out of my office and go downstairs and just walk around the quadrangle and relax and think a little bit. And maybe after a stressful meeting, uh, I need that to decompress yeah. a little bit. And the... And the peacocks are out there doing their thing, yeah. and, the, and the deer are, are sitting over in the grass. And particularly this time of year, right? Uh, Beautiful. Late winter in San Antonio, you can't beat it. <laughs> uh, now, it is a little cumbersome in July or August yeah, when you well, walk around. Yeah, but, yeah. <clears throat> but I love that, that, that aspect of it. Yeah. I, you know, that was one thing when I came, again, with Ray Fayon, and I saw peacocks walking around sure, and everything. Yeah. And I thought, man, this is just the coolest place. Um, I guess finally here, as we wind down, I, I wonder if you have a message for people who would watch this. If there was anything you would like the viewers to know about the military uh, in San Antonio, or just a message you would have for, for, you know, especially people here locally who are watching this and who have supported the military here for so many decades. Yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to do that. And what I would say is uh, we, we are America's military, regardless of which service it is. And, and it was interesting to have, we had El Ray Fayo on the phone just before we went live. <laughs> John called, yeah. John called, and uh, he's a dear friend of both of ours. Uh, and he was talking about the incredible response they're getting at the schools. Yes, sir. When our military ambassadors show up. And, and what I would say to folks that are listening out there is we still have one of the only all-volunteer forces in the world. Mm. Uh, and we are far and away the largest all-volunteer force in the world. For, for the sake of our nation, for the sake of our children, for the sake of our freedoms, we need to sustain that. Yeah. And that requires young men and women of conscience mm -hmm. to raise their hand and volunteer to serve in the military. And so I would say, have the discussion with young people in yeah. your lives about the value of service beyond beyond the fiscal value, yeah. beyond the uh, you know the the intrinsic things that are that are you know the health care and the pay and right. you know those types of things. Talk about the intangibles, the, the valuable experience, right. what it teaches you about leadership, and what it really instills in you with regards to giving back to your nation in, in yeah. defense of your country during a time where, frankly, the world's pretty dangerous. So exactly. that's what I'd say. Well, you know, we have, in, in addition to John McFadden, we have three, I believe, other retired colonels on our court. And yes. I think combined they have something like 10 or 12 degrees that we talk about with education all the time. Absolutely. Of course, all paid for by, you know, Uncle Sam, as yeah. I like to say. But I get chills every time when I'm seeing these school visits and you see these teenagers raising their hand and That's they great. come up and then we give them a medal and everything and it, it, it never fails. Um, speaking of medals, I think we, we're going to close here. I think you have a couple things you wanted yeah. to show off here real so, quick. Uh, so I, I do, people always ask me about coins, right? So so in the military we have a tradition of challenge coins. This is my, my challenge coin from, yeah, my challenge coin from... Uh, from uh, Army North Fifth Army. That is Army. beautiful. Yeah, and on the back, it's got the quadrangle, and it's got three stars on it. Uh, but but I brought my favorite one, which is I talked a little bit about my my experience as a, a special operations aviator. So this is my Night Stalker coin, and in uh, and in uh, the one sixtieth, we say Night Stalkers don't quit. So uh, anyway, if you if you see someone in the military, you you pull out your challenge coin, right. and if they don't have their challenge coin, the tradition is. They have to buy you a beverage of your choice. Oh, so, nice. So what I'm going to do, Ernie, is I'm going to give you your challenge coin. Oh, my goodness. Right here. Uh, and you you got to make sure you've got that with you, right? Because when yes, I sir. see you at Fiesta, I'll be looking for a margarita if you don't have that. Oh, with you. that's fair. And I will <laughs> gladly hand you one of my Fiesta medals as as well. But I, I know we're going to see each other again. This sucker, we will. This is a beauty. I just want everybody to see. Uh, and and I, I've been blessed to be handed a couple of these over the years, and I, I just cherish them so much they're they're beautiful and and i will uh, i will cherish this sir thanks so much such a pleasure to visit with you today thanks for the uh, time general evans really and, and needless it. to say thank you for your amazing service and and uh let me be one of the first to congratulate you on your retirement thanks so much and uh when it's all over i'll, I'll come meet you over here we'll get a margarita or something we gotta do here. it we got a brewery right across the street well, too. you don't have to tell me <laughs> twice so great to see you sir Good thank you very you much and, and thanks to everybody watching uh, obviously for their military service uh, hopefully you know by now how much uh, deep respect and appreciation i have so with that we bid you farewell and say this is another episode of Pickup Lines presented by Gomez Law Firm and Integrity Roofing and Siding. We'll be back very soon with another episode right here. Have a great weekend.